Hey guys, um, today I wanted to look at doing depth of field inside of Houdini and getting the effect of where things in the foreground are blurry and things in the background are blurry while our main focus, our subject of our scene is still in focus. So let's get on Houdini and see how to do this. So to get started, I need to create a piece of geometry. Um, I just pushed tab and started typing out geometry and it came up and I selected it and I want to make this a little bit more interesting so I'm not going to use the basic file node. Um, Houdini actually has some nice um, test geometry so if we go down here to test geometry we can see more. Um, it's kind of getting cropped off so I'm going to type in geometry so we can see it up here and we can see that there's several different options. Um, in this case, I guess I'll just create a little rubber toy to make it a little bit interesting, something fun to look at. Um, I'm going to split the view because we need a camera in here and I'm going to make this one down here a perspective view. In this case, mine was already, but you might not have had it set up as perspective yet, so just switch it to perspective. Um, also, I need to turn this into a camera. So where it says no cam here, I'm going to go in and create a new camera. And that lets us set up our camera there in the scene. And here another perspective. Oh, another thing that I did so that I can move the camera with this is I turned this lock on. If I don't have that lock on and I rotate, you can see that it goes off the camera and if I wanted to get back onto it um, I can go here and select the camera. So that's how you do that. Um, here with this camera um, I have a lot of different options and I can move it and work with it. Uh, right now what I want to do is select the show handle tool and that's going to give us a couple of controls that we can actually go around and move. In this case, I want to adjust the focus of our scene and I'm going to move it to be right on this character's eyes. Um, you'll hear this a lot from different people. The eyes are the gateway to the soul. And in CG, a lot of characters look kind of lifeless. Um, but we want to be able to make sure that when we bring interest into the character that we're really kind of focusing on the eyes. So that's what you want to be the most um, polished and the most in focus because it brings attention to it. And maybe I'll move it kind of in between both eyes. Although you can choose to do one eye or another that is in focus. Um, if I move this handle, you can see that I have control over the where the position of the camera. Um, with the camera selected, I'm going to go into the uh, view options and look at this. Uh, right now it's set to 50 millimeter lens. I'm gonna adjust that um, down. Maybe I'll do something like an, actually, yeah. I'll make it a short focal length. And this is just kind of basically adjusting the lens uh, that you're using the um, camera with. So right now with this short focal length, basically you're doing a wide angle camera view. And I'm going to now need more pieces of geometry. So I'm going to just make several copies of this little guy. and. I'm going to go into my object geometry that I created and to do that I'm just going to create a transform node rather than bringing in more uh, pieces of geometry which is a bit more heavy. Um, we can use just transform nodes and merge them together. That way it's kind of using the procedural nature of Houdini and making the scene a little bit more efficient. So on this one, I'm going to move it back negative 10, not 104, but 
10. And I'm going to add a merge node. So I'm connecting that there and connecting this here. If I push the eyedrop through there, I can see both of these. Um, and when we work with the, the field, we get the far and the close working together. So um, to get that kind of blurry where the center is in focus. So let's add a, another transform node. In this case, I'm just going to do control C, then control V to copy and paste another copy of this. And all I'm going to do is push this in positive 10. 10. There we go. Um, right now, the camera, if we go back to our object level, is not far enough back to be able to see our character. So I'm going to just this so that we can see him. There we go. So now we have something way in the background, something in the midground that is going to be our main focus, and then something in the foreground. So um, we set a focal point and we set the focal length, which is our lens. And um, you would start thinking that maybe you can see some perspective at this point, but there's a few things that we have to do. So if we were to do a test render on this. Render, render, render. There we go. Um, you'll see that everything is in focus in our scene because we haven't added any depth of field yet. So how do we do that? If we right click on this control handle here, and we go to focus handles. We can see this square is right at the focal point that we aimed our camera at. So that is good. That's where we want our focus at. Um, we can move this if we wanted to change the focal plane. Uh, but I'm going to control Z and undo that because I want that there. Um, also with this, you have these little um, cones. And the other one is way over there. So anything in between these two cones is considered to be in focus. And right now, basically everything that we have is in focus. So let's take this and limit it. And I want to limit it right to this character. So that character is in focus. And anything outside of there starts to get out of focus. Um, so let's take a look at that and you'll see that we still don't see any results yet. And the reason for that is that our renderer doesn't know that we want to have depth of field yet either. So let's take a look at setting that up. Um, going back to the scene view and I'm going to go here and switch to our out. And here I have my mantra node. In its properties, I can see that we're rendering camera one. That's awesome. And where I want to go to is in rendering. We have this checkbox here that says enable depth of field. We check that on. And let's go back to our render view. And you can see that it's already getting that um, depth of field. So we can see that our uh, main focus object is in focus. This is really out of focus and in the background we're starting to get some defocusing as well. Um, so that's giving us a lot of um, perspective here. So that is a great start. Another thing that we can actually do as well is give this kind of feel where we're getting a haze as we go background. So if you look at things in a photograph, typically they get more defocused the further, I mean, not defocused, but they get more um, desaturated and lighter as they go back in the background. And we can actually simulate that pretty easy with a quick sheet. Um, 
what I'm going to do is actually create a box. And I'm going to actually create control click on it so that it creates it in the center. And I am going to scale this up. And I basically want to encompass everything. And I want to make sure that the end of the box is actually out of my render view area. There we go. And I'm getting a little bit of the corner there. So I'm going to scale this up there. So that way, none of the corners are in my viewport here. Um, you can see that it's starting off right at the camera here and it's going back. Um, what I'm going to do for this cheat is go to the cloud um, panel here and create a cloud rig. That's going to set up lights and a cloud in our scene. It's going might take a little bit, but there you go. Um, obviously, if we look at our scene, we can't see anything. <laughs> so that's not a good thing. Um, what we want to do is adjust the properties of the cloud. So that way we can make it more of a haze rather than a thick cloud. Um, with the resolution here, I don't really need all that much resolution for what I'm doing. So I'm going to bring it down to 0.1 here. And oops, sorry. This resolution scale 0.5 is, I don't want to mess with that. What I do want to do is go to the cloud node here. And here, the sampling divisions. I'm going to bring this down. That's kind of the resolution that I want to focus on. And then uh, density is the other one that I want to address. So the density multiplier right now is at 10. I'm going to bring this way, way down. So maybe like 0 0.001. And I start getting um, some haze in here. And it's really not super like tense or dense, I mean, but it is getting us kind of um, that haze look. Um, let's add a plane or a grid so that we can get a little bit of a ground plane working for us. So I'm going to take that and scale it up, maybe move it a tiny bit down. And let's take a look at what the render looks like. And in the skylight here selected, I'm going to um, in a, uh, render light geometry. When I do that, you'll see that the light in the sky is going to be rendered. Also for the color, because it's the sky, I like to go in and kind of give it a sky color. So adjusting it something like that so that we get some light effect. And then also in the sunlight that was created when we did the sun, I'm going to adjust it to be kind of more golden. And I'm going to bring the intensity of that orange way down, but I want to have a little bit of that warm feel in there. And Let's see, what else do I want to adjust? The shadows. The shadows on the sunlight. Uh, I want to adjust the color so that way they have a little bit of color in them. I'm going to use kind of this blue that was the same color that we created in the um, sky, but I'm going to make it really dark like shadows. Um, it's just going to give it a tiny bit of a color to the shadows and be useful for us. And in the scene view here, I'm going to push space G to find where the sunlight is at. There we go. And I'm going to adjust the angle that this light is working at. So I'm going to um, go to my transform. And if you want to rotate this, this is locked down right now. Um, so I'm going to right click and go to the delete channels. That's going to set, um, remove the connections that were built there. 
and I'm going to kind of rotate this so that I get a nice um, light coming from the side. And let's look at our render view. And we can see that this is starting to um, get an effect that we're looking for. Um, and I'm going to pop up the final rendered image because it's going to take a while to render right now. But this is what the final rendered image looks like. So yeah, that's how you do depth of field inside of Houdini. And if you guys found this tutorial useful, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel so that you can see more videos like this in the future. Also, if you um, did any work that was based off of this tutorial or that this tutorial helped you with, put a link to it down in my Twitter. Um, I'll check it out and I'd love to see your work. Uh, the link to my Twitter is down in the description and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.